Every backer of Star Citizen begins their journey with a singularly important question. What ship should be their first? For the longest time, that pool was limited to just a few reasonable choices, you know, ships that give you the best bang for your buck. That though, might have just changed this year, with the introduction of the brand new starter ship, the Drake Cutter. A flying brick with such an impressively large interior, level of versatility, and importantly good value that it finally gives the Avenger Titan starter ship a run for its money. So in this video, I'm going to take you through why this ugly but kind of lovable ship might be the best starter ship for you if you're just starting off in Star Citizen. So there are a number of reasons why the Cutter might actually be a better starter option than the traditionally best all-arounder, the Aegis Avenger Titan. First though, I think it's prudent to very quickly refresh your memory as to why the Titan has been so good up until now. Before that though, if by the end of this video you think I did a good job and deserve it, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button and hit the bell icon to show your support because it really helps me out. So the ship affectionately known as the Penguin has traditionally been the most recommended ship for good reason. In terms of physical attributes, it contains an interior cargo bay capable of holding a hover bike or PTV buggy, a bed for, you know, saving log off locations, it has access to local storage for loot, it has two exits, and is aerodynamic enough to give it good performance in atmosphere. In terms of loadout, it also comes stock with two size 1 shields, a single power plant in size 1, two size 1 coolers, and a size 1 quantum drive with a 583 liter capacity tank. And finally, and most impressive, it boasts the best DPS of any starter in the lineup, capable of fitting a single size 4 fixed on the nose and two size 3 fixed on the wings including actually a couple of missiles as well. And all of this comes to a surprisingly good value of $70, including a game package, which when considering the other options, really doesn't compromise on anything a new player might want to do, whereas the alternatives tend to have pretty big downsides. So then how does the Cutter compare to the Titan? Let's begin with its physical attributes. I'll be frank, the Drake Cutter really isn't much to look at. It's like someone looked at a broken, rusted out 1950s fridge in a junkyard and said, hey, let's slap some engines on it and call it a day. The Drake design philosophy, after all, is all about efficiency. It's about honesty and no-nonsense, ultra-utilitarian design philosophy. The design lays bare the ship's mechanicals both inside and out, treating us to a visual feast of detail where each nut, bolt, and weld, and even ship system is discernible. Clearly, there was no budget really spent on hull plating, but that's, in my opinion, what gives it a bit of charm. It's got character. You could say that much about it. As is typical of Drake ships, they've slapped some massive VTOL engines, originally from the Vulture by the way, on its side, which gives it, when combined with the utter lack of hull plating, a pretty unexpected amount of acceleration in atmosphere, propelling it through even the thickest atmospheres better than you might expect. It's certainly more maneuverable and faster accelerating than the beleaguered RSI Aurora starter, so you've got that. Functionally, these VTOLs should also assist this ship in atmosphere in the future when cargo mass becomes a factor, something that's presently not in effect but is still a planned feature and will make a difference when trying to lift off when that comes online. And the cutter even has a bit of a quirk. It has these side window blast shields, or as I like to call them, cope shields, because let's be honest here, Drake ships have never been known as tanky ships. This ship then, along with the recently released Corsair, are probably the best detailed ships in the game at this point. CIG have really started to show how good they're getting at making ships, and these kind of put other ships in a weird position of feeling kind of outdated and old. They really give you the illusion of reality with its design, like it could be built tomorrow, save the quantum technology and gravity plating that this universe has. In terms of loadout, Unlike the Titan, it only sports a single component of each type, all in size 1, and comes with a rather puny set of two size 2 hardpoints, coming stock with gimbaled size 1 repeaters. This puts its firepower roughly on par with the likes of the base Aurora, and far behind the Titan. Still, it manages well enough in light combat, and can do even better after a trip to a shop like Cousin Crows to upgrade all its components to Class A's. 
Despite this shortcoming though, it more than makes up for it with its class leading quantum fuel tank, coming in at around 6,000 liters to the Titan's 583. This translates to unparalleled range and quantum speed, allowing it to equip the incredibly fast fuel guzzling VK00 quantum drive and still have enough to fuel traveling across the system several times over. Certainly then it makes the cutter the best starter for the upcoming pyro system, which is several times larger than the Stanton system. But now let's move on to its interior. Unlike the Titan, the Cutter only has a single entrance through its cargo bay, and this is where you'll see one of the ship's finest features. On paper, the cargo capacity caps out at 4 SCU, which is less than the Avengers 6. However, in reality, the Cutter's cargo bay volume is substantially larger, and this comes down to the fact that the Avenger Titan has two entrances which allows it to fill up its entire cargo bay where the Cutter still needs to have a path for the pilot to enter. In practice though, you can stack this thing as full as you like and just crawl through the space left over to get to the cabin. Even more importantly though, the larger cargo space allows you to park an STV, something that the Titan can't do. Sadly and maybe ironically though, neither the Drake Dragonfly nor the Drake Mule technically fit. Unsurprisingly then, the ROC mining vehicle also doesn't fit with the ramp up. So you're not going to be able to run those unless you decide to fly with the ramp down, and in that case you can't fly into Quantum, so it's kind of pointless. The cargo bay also features a number of the ship's critical components, giving players easy access to them for repairs and replacement in the future when that feature comes online hopefully sometime next year. On a detail level, the space is also just as impressive as the exterior, featuring thoughtful portholes to give pilots a view of their surroundings before opening the ramp into dangerous situations, and cool fine details like these exposed welds on the structure. This is the first time I've seen this kind of detail actually in Star Citizen, and definitely adds a further sense of roughness to the Drake design language. Moving forward to the ship's midsection, the cutter also contains a decently sized living space. In fact, it's generously sized enough that you could actually fit some additional storage in here if you really wanted to get more cargo on board. Though in its intended configuration, it's pretty nicely sized, big enough for a fully sized toilet and shower and Drake standards, something that can't be said for the much larger Cutlass. Come on CIG, what's going on with that? It also has a pantry and a fire extinguisher position, though that's missing right now probably because they're working on the fire mechanic feature, and it even has a storage locker with ample space for loot and gear. Finally, stepping through an appropriately cool looking bulkhead door, we arrive on the flight deck. The space is also generously sized, like the cabin, both horizontally and vertically, giving space for cargo netting on the roof for additional storage, and a small gun rack with space for a weapon, sidearm, and utility. It even comes with a new type of large utility slot for weapons like the rocket launcher and railgun. A very nice feature to have for a lot of different kinds of situations. Stepping into the flight seat, the chair lifts on a rail, bringing the pilot to a set of old fashioned analog flight controls and MFDs. The center radar even has a curve like an old CRT monitor. I love this little touch. This is certainly yet another charm of Drake ships, which despite modern improvements with touchscreens, gesture sensors, and holograms, still reverts to the tried and true analog style of yesteryear. It might not be pretty, but it gives you the sense that it'll work straight through a mass coronal ejection where other ships will just become inoperable. With the blast doors pulled back, the visibility isn't bad either. It's certainly no Aurora or Mustang, but it's good enough to allow you to navigate tight hangar spaces in a pinch. But I've not yet mentioned what all of this costs, and thus we arrive at perhaps the cutter's very best attribute, the price. At the moment of this video, it's on special sale for 45 bucks, the same price as the most basic starter ship, the Aurora or the Mustang, and will rise to $60 following the conclusion of this year's sale. But even at $60, for what you get in return, the Drake Cutter is still the best value starter of any in the lineup. So then should you, the prospective new star citizen, choose the Cutter over the Titan? Well, that actually still depends. In the end, the decision is yours. Not everyone is going to find its qualities outweigh its unrefined facade. I will say this though, 
In my view, the Cutter is the perfect companion to players who love everything but ship-to-ship -ship combat. If you're an aspiring cargo runner, FPS player, miner, wreck diver, or explorer, the Drake Cutter is your steed. However, if you want to do ship-to-ship -ship combat, then the Titan might be the better pick. But which do you choose, and why? Let me know down below, and if you like this video, like I said before, you know what to do. I've been Morphologist, I'll see you in the next one.